Hello, and welcome back to Ask RPZ. You ask questions, and I'll answer them. Let's jump in. First question is from Mac. You say you do the same thing every day. Does that feel stagnant or comforting? First off, big shout out to Mac in Asheville. Hey there. Comforting or stagnant? Uh, neither, actually. So there are definitely moments where doing the same things every day can feel comforting. But generally, I always default to, to the quote by, what is it, Gustave Flaubert? I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name. Be regular and orderly in your life so that you may be violent and original in your work. So what I, what I think I reach for, and I do, I do so many of the same things every day. I do handstands every day. I walk Riley every day. I'm known for wearing like black or white tank tops. I journal every morning and every night. But actually what those things enable me to do is to go wild and off the deep end in, in the domains in my life that I care the most or that I am learning the most at any given time. It is the stability of the habits of my exercise routine. I train movement two hours every day because that gives me the energy and the capacity to go spin up a new function at Xander Media or to show up fully, compassionately, lovingly, empathetically with my team. When I am in chaos in my daily regular routine, I am less effective in those domains in my life. Usually it's work right now, but in whatever the domains in my life are that are the biggest challenge, the biggest growth opportunity. So it is the stability in certain domains that enable the wild creativity in others. Question from a hinge match. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of your lessons learned building and selling Robin's Cafe? I learned so much from building and selling Robin's Cafe. The lessons are endless, but two that I would really point to are building a business or, or really any endeavor by protecting the downside, right? And so for me, it was taking a bet on myself that I could make it work, knowing that if I lost money, the, the learning experience would more than make up for it, and I could pay back the people who had taken a bet on me. And then the second is the real felt experience of how valuable company culture is. We built the best company culture of any coffee shop in our zip code and saw day to day what a big difference that made in the business because my customers, my employees were, were happier and thus provided a better experience. Question from G. Can you share how you stay so diligently productive all the time? I need help with that and finding balance now that I'm back in school. Hello, G. It's interesting. I used to look at, I don't know, whether productivity gurus or, you know, people who like worked hard all the time. And I thought of it as diligence and I thought of it as discipline. And I said, oh, I guess I'm just not that disciplined. And it's been really interesting because I, uh, we chose this question because I've been getting this question more and more as people see so much of what I do in my life and so much of it being the same that is hard for other people. Um, I think there's two threads that I want to pull on. Uh, and I could, I could and probably should write, you know, an article answering this question in full. But first, big shout out to Stanford professor BJ Fogg and his book, Tiny Habits. Everyone listening and watching should go read Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg because I write an hour every day. I train, exercise, move two hours every single day. I didn't start there. And the core message behind Tiny Habits is start small. Whatever you're trying to build, whatever you're trying to accomplish, begin at the beginning. Begin in the tiniest possible increment. So when G is saying, you know, how do you stay so diligent? It doesn't feel like diligence. It feels like when I started writing, I've been writing for 10 years, but a year ago I started writing 30 minutes a day. And now a year later, I'm writing an hour a day. 15 years ago, I started an exercise routine that I've continued to iterate on. And now two hours a day feels commonplace because I've built up to that over the course of more than a decade. 
The other thing that I'd say, in addition to building habits and creating behavior change from from the ground up, from small into whatever you want it to grow into, is I, I'm not perfect, but I'm much better than I've ever been before at not trying to pressure myself, force myself to do things that I don't want to do. You know, I don't love bureaucracy and paperwork, but actually I'm choosing to do that because the outcome that I want is so much more important than it doesn't feel like force. What it is actually is ownership. The truth of the matter is we are all doing whatever we want all the time, right? We are choosing what we're doing every moment of every day, even if it doesn't feel like it, even if I am simultaneously saying, even if I'm eating broccoli while declaring I don't like eating broccoli, I'm still the one choosing to eat broccoli. And for the record, I don't like broccoli. The more clearly we can recognize that what we are doing is what we are choosing to do, it's kind of working backwards. The, the easier it is to build the habits long-term of the stuff that we actually want to do. The more we align what we say we want to do with what we're actually doing, the, the easier it is to accomplish and to, to reach for those goals. The next question is from LinkedIn. Um, from our friend Kevin Kinkor at Kinkor Consulting. He said, how has marketing changed because of COVID? Yeah, it's great. Uh, and everyone should check out Kinkor Consulting, um, a, a longtime friend and, and client at Xander Media. I don't know that I actually would agree that COVID has changed how we work. I think it's exposed and expedited how we work and all of the patterns associated. And the same is true in marketing. So let me, let me elaborate. In 2015, I came into the world of responsive. The core tenant of responsive is that the future of work equals work is accelerating. The rate of change is accelerating. And that was, that was in 2015. Um, we were talking about distributed work, about remote work in 2016 on stage. And then 2020 hit, COVID hit, and now everyone was talking about remote and distributed work, right? So the, the trends of COVID changing how we work, it's actually just COVID expedited all of those trends that were already underway. They might've taken 10 years, instead they took three months. And the same is true in marketing. Marketing has been changing faster and faster and faster. And in the last two years, that's expedited even more. Um, I, I've been paying a lot of attention to the world of uh, Web3 and crypto and there's this saying in crypto right now that like every day feels like a year. If you take a day off of what's happened in NFTs or with DAOs, um, distributed autonomous organizations, right? Self-managed organizations built on the blockchain. If you look away for a day, things have changed hugely, right? Or take a different domain, uh, TikTok. Somebody drinks a specific drink, the TikTok video goes viral, and across the world, that drink is sold out on shelves within 24 hours. The rate of change has accelerated and COVID has accelerated that rate of change. A couple of more nuanced, maybe more tactical things since I know Kevin, authenticity has always won, but authenticity is the only thing that wins in 2022, right? There's no more hiding, truth will out. And so I think the biggest trend, at least that I'm the most excited for is in marketing in 2022 is that, right, uh, to, to quote Inside Circle, um, our friend Eldred Jackson at Inside Circle, the truth will set you free. This idea that if we're really being honest about who we are, all of our foibles, all of our opportunities for growth and the things that we as a company or, or we as a marketing endeavor are working on actually that's going to resonate because we're going to sniff out a rat. We're going to know when someone is being inauthentic and that authenticity, why do used car salesmen get a bad rap? Because historically there's so much inauthenticity in that industry. Cool. What do you do to be like the best ever used car salesperson in the world today? Sell it exactly like it is, right? No bullshit no polishing the wheels to make them look slightly better, right? You sell exactly what it is and you're incredibly clear about it. I promise that used car salesperson is going to be like, is going to win. 
And so I think the the biggest trend that COVID or or the rate of rate the rapid rate of change that we're all seeing um, is contributing to marketing in 2022 is greater and greater and greater authenticity and also greater speed. Next question from Rhonda Love. How can we really support struggling employees without them feeling threatened or attacked? It's such a great question. And shout out to, to Rhonda Love in uh, Vieques, Puerto Rico. I've learned so much about how to support struggling employees from Rhonda. And the answer is empathy. The answer is showing up kindly and asking them questions. It goes back to some of our comments earlier about authenticity, right? But, and, and it also depends on what kind of business people wanna build. For me, I'm not trying to sell Xander Media for you know a couple million dollars three years from now. I'm building a company and a culture that I want to be a part of and I want to be sustainable for the rest of my life. And so that means prioritizing more the struggles of employees over, for example, the struggles of clients or over delivering, even over delivering exceptional value to the clients. Because I believe if I'm supporting my employees long term, that's going to be the best thing I can do for our clients and for the business. But that's not necessarily true. Other people have other constraints. Tactically, we're figuring this out at Xander Media right now, right? There's org structures, there's performance reviews, there's how do you build a performance management system where people know what is expected of them, they know the growth trajectory they're on, they're not getting unreasonable requests, which is a, 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 a fallibility at Xander Media right now because we're all learning so much and we're all doing so many new things that sometimes the expectations are really unclear. And that's my failing or my my growth curve as the CEO of Xander Media right now, right? But ultimately, despite all of the systems, right, you can have the best performance management systems and the best hierarchy and org structure and reporting infrastructure and Slack processes in place for communication. But if you don't show up with empathy and with kindness, if you don't ask kind and candorous questions, nothing else matters, right? It is building that safety, that quality of connection across a team that builds the best culture and ultimately builds the best company. Okay, we have a couple just quick questions here at the end. What's your favorite way to celebrate a big work win? For other people, I love calling them. I love calling them out publicly on Slack. Um, for myself, when I've landed a new win, when I've signed, you know, our biggest contract to date or delivered something really exceptional, I celebrate by moving on to the next one. <laughs> or by exercising extra hard that day and then getting up and being excited to do it again tomorrow. Uh, and not to say that I'm not grateful and appreciative and celebratory, but I don't dwell on my celebrations. I learn from them and then, right, because for me it's the process. And so I literally like, you know, we have, we have done some of our best work ever in the last few months and I celebrate by exercising hard and getting up tomorrow. All right, last question. What is the most valuable skill from anything that you've learned and how does that serve you now? <laughs> God, that's a, a small question to end with. Um, and right, here's a, here's a small answer. Being a self-student, self-awareness and the process of developing self-awareness is the single most valuable skill I've learned. It serves me now because it's it's a meta skill. The more we, the more I am able to really understand what I am doing, why I'm doing it, the more useful I can be in any domain of my life, right? When someone is a learner, when someone is excited to learn about themselves and about other people and about other things, the opportunities for growth are endless. Thanks so much for tuning in to episode two of Ask RPZ. Thank you everyone who submitted questions. And 
If you have questions, email them to me at robin at xandermedia.com and we will do our best to tackle them in an upcoming episode. Anything you want to talk about, everything's fair game, but particularly business, movement, and self-awareness, my three pillars. Ask your questions, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.